In the past, I would stress over which emulators can run on which devices and which form factors I like better than others and which to take with me. I would have to do the math on which devices have the horsepower to run which console generations and which emulators are available for which platforms. And then save files. Oh my god, I would have a game going on this device, but then if I brought this device with me, I could emulate the same game, but I wouldn't have the same save file. I used to have all these emulation headaches, but I don't have to worry about them anymore because now I'm using game streaming. And the best part about game streaming, if you already own a gaming PC and a smartphone, it's free to get started. As in zero extra dollars, free. Shortly after I got started game streaming for my regular PC games, it kind of clicked that I didn't have to worry about any of those headaches anymore if I just streamed all my emulators as well. So in this video, I specifically want to zoom in on streaming emulators and why it's so awesome. In short, it puts all my ROM files, save files, emulator compatibility, emulator settings, and hardware performance in the same spot. And then I can just access that emulation powerhouse gaming PC from whatever client device I want. If I'm out and about, I can stream games on just my iPhone, but more often than not during game time, I'm at home. So if I'm hanging out in my living room, I'm streaming to the Apple TV or the Xbox Series S, usually whichever one is already on. And if I'm hanging out in bed, maybe I'm comfy game streaming on my ROG Ally, or big screen game streaming on my Google TV plugged into my projector throwing a 100 inch TV on my bedroom wall. So you see how this is just a very different approach than, well, this is the only device I wanna use for emulation. I love it, I just take it everywhere and that's it. My gaming PC will always have more power, more emulator compatibility and more storage compared to these retro handhelds because well, it's a fully fledged gaming PC. But that also means it's just not portable by definition, but I so wish I could just take it with me. And that's where the game streaming comes in because you're essentially taking your fully fledged gaming PC on the go. If you're watching this and you're thinking like me, you're thinking, mm, this is too good to be true. There's got to be some kind of catch. Well, yeah, there is a catch, but we'll get to that later. But on the other hand, if this could come together and work well, then this is a much more free-flowing type of gaming experience that a busy guy like me can really appreciate. If you're like me and you don't have a lot of time to just sit down and game whenever you want, that flexibility of where and how you play might just help you fit in more games. And if it allows you to play more games, then you should definitely give this a try. So let me show you how it all comes together. Here I've got my Windows gaming PC back at home in my studio. You definitely do not need the same specs I do, so I won't even list them here, but anything from like the last four to five years of PC hardware should be more than enough for emulating most games. But more importantly, it's running Windows, which I think we can all agree has the best emulator compatibility over something like iOS or Android. Development on emulators typically starts on Windows because that's what most gamers use. Now, since you're watching this video, I'm going to assume you already own a gaming PC and you'll already know your way around your emulators and you're just looking for the best way to stream them. So that's what this video is about. If you're a beginner at emulation and you're looking to start from scratch, I'll leave some resources in the description below. On this Windows 11 gaming PC, I've already configured all my emulators just the way I like them. The key here is usually that I have to start them in full screen mode, but starting in full screen mode is usually just an easy checkbox type of setting on most of these emulators. But beyond that tip, I won't go through setting up each individual emulator because it would just take really damn long and you probably have already done it anyway. But of course, if you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. I've got pretty much every console from original Nintendo up to PS3 and Xbox 360, as well as Switch, of course, running on the system. Now, as far as streaming goes, I've tried multiple different combinations of softwares, but what's worked best for me and what I recommend to everyone watching is a combination of Sunshine and Moonlight together with Big Box. Now, I know I said game streaming is free and Sunshine and Moonlight are, but Big Box is actually a paid software. Now, it's kind of optional for this process, but I really, really recommend it if you're going to go down this route. I've already made a whole video tutorial on how to set this up, so of course, I'll leave a video card and also the link in the description and you don't have to watch that video right this second but at the end of this video if you want to just go over and watch that to get step-by-step -step directions feel free so at this point we're ready to stream with moonlight and sunshine i'm going to grab my iphone as an example client device so as we boot up moonlight and connect to our gaming pc we can see that there are just a couple options here now if you wanted to save money and ditch big box you technically could just click around the desktop until you find your emulators but instead of tapping around your device like a madman you could opt for big box here and have a gamepad controllable ui for this interface, as I mentioned before, I recommend BigBox, which comes with LaunchBox Premium. Now, this is a paid software, but this video is not sponsored by LaunchBox or anyone else for that matter. And if you're gonna go down this route, I highly, highly recommend BigBox. Out of everything I've tried, BigBox is hands down the best for this, and the price is well worth supporting the devs for all that they do. The license is only $30 for one year of updates or $75 for a lifetime license. So if you've taken my advice and installed LaunchBox Premium, you can add the BigBox shortcut to your Sunshine applications for a one-touch launch as you connect from your Moonlight client. I've already configured my launch box, but again, there are many tutorials on how to do so, adding your emulators, importing your ROMs, and so forth. I'll link some down below. But if you're at this point, from here, you're pretty much in emulation streaming heaven. I can scroll through my consoles, select games, see artwork, and trailers, but they're all nice and neatly organized instead of sifting through ROM folders on my desktop, which apparently I used to do. And this experience stays consistent over any client device that you connect from. 
I can play PS3 on my iPhone with an Xbox controller attached or switch over and play the same game on my iPad, just whatever you have available. I can load up the same game on my Google TV with Chromecast 4K, which I have no idea if anyone's hacked to emulate games, but it's such a low power device, I doubt this can even play PS1. Any device that has the Moonlight streaming client can now become your game console with all your games and emulators in one place, which is just really cool if you ask me. It saves time if you're trying to squeeze in games wherever you are, it saves money if you're thinking about buying a second PC for emulation in the living room, and it saves the headache of juggling ROMs and save files between devices. Well, it has to be too good to be true. Well, now it's time for the catch. You do need a stable network connection. Well, you probably saw that coming, but it's just the nature of the beast of game streaming. It comes with the territory. So if you're going on a camping trip or something and you don't have Wi-Fi or even any cell service, yeah, this method falls short for that and you're just not gonna be able to play any games. But even when you do have Wi-Fi, but it's just not a network that you have any control over, it can be tough if you have a bad connection. But the biggest slander I hear about game streaming is that it just doesn't work on your home network. Certainly, if you're in the same house as the gaming PC host, your client device should not have enough lag that it's even noticeable. If it is, then something's wrong and that something can definitely be fixed. I've been game streaming a lot on my regular home network and honestly, I forget I'm game streaming sometimes, it's so seamless. So if you're having network issues at home, don't write off game streaming and tell everyone else it sucks just because you had a bad time on a network that can be fixed. I've certainly run into a few network issues of my own and I've been able to sort them all out. So yeah, just comment below if you have any network issues. I'll do my best to lend a hand, but of course the community can work together to help each other as well. But yeah, just one more tidbit about networks. Once you've paired a Moonlight client to your Sunshine host at least once, then you can actually access that same Sunshine host from other networks as well, like I'm doing right now. So you have to connect on the same network first at least once, and then you can connect them anytime. This is super useful when I'm traveling. If I've got downtime at the hotel, I can just set up my iPad with an Xbox controller or a laptop and just start game streaming and have all of my emulators in one place without having to bring anything extra with me. I can forget everything else at home and just use my phone if I still want a game. Now with everything I've just said, the pro level tip, if you still want to be covered even when the network connection is not great, you're going to want to hybridize your gaming setup. For me personally, the ROG Ally has become the perfect hybrid game streaming device because when the game streaming connection is great, I can just game stream in perfect high fidelity and high refresh rate, but then when the connection is not good, I can just play the games locally at a bit lower quality and frame rate. I've already made a whole video about why the ROG Ally is an incredible hybrid game streaming machine, and you can check that out here. And of course, I'll link that video in the description down below as well. I've even set up my emulator's save files and save states to sync across my OneDrive. It's automatically configured with Windows when you sign in with your Microsoft account, so it's super easy to just sign into the same Microsoft account on your Windows gaming PC and your Windows handheld, and then just point any emulator's save file path to your OneDrive. Let me know if you want a separate video on just syncing those ROM and save files in the comments below. So closing thoughts, try out some game streaming for free with Moonlight and Sunshine, get Big Boss with Launchbox Premium if you want a controller first interface while streaming, and squeeze more games in whenever and wherever you want. I've been game streaming all my emulators for a couple years now and I would not go back to juggling between devices. So there is a light at the end of the tunnel of learning all this game streaming stuff. With just a little bit of effort, you too can be living in the future with self-hosted game streaming. See you in the next one, peace.